Vander wants, do they actually want to ban one of these supports away here and try and push Enraged or Vander on a different one? Or do they well, just trade supports? We are about to find out the answer to that question, Deficio. Picks and bans has begun for our penultimate game of the day. Irelia taken off the table from Overpower, as okay. far as SK is concerned, and Graves removed from Forgiven. So very specific ban here from SK Gaming. Overpower played Irelia at IM Cologne, and him and Jankos together threw a lot of early pressure, early ganks, got him going, and he completely snowballed the game, as an Aurelia can do. That's why SK banned the way. It's not the pick itself they're afraid of. It's more the combination of Jankos helping Overpower, giving him the lead, and him just taking over the game from there. Well, we'll find out how the rest of the bands continue to play out. Zed, the follow-up from SK. Rockout taking their time on their second pick. Forgiven versus Woolite. Both new AD carries on their respective teams okay. for this season. Look at Enraid's face here. He's Re pretty confused. Well, Renekton Freddy, being banned. Come on, Freddy made his name on Renekton. That is Still, a... No, you don't ban Renekton just because you know Freddy can play it. Again, Gnar is open. Do you rather have Freddy on Gnar than Renekton? Well, we don't know. We haven't seen Freddy's Gnar. I will guarantee so, you he plays. <laughs> uh, Freddy, of course, one of the other really, really top tier, uh, top laners throughout the summer split. His Nidalee in particular was phenomenal towards the end of the year. For the first time, we see a blue side Rek'Sai ban. And the final ban from Rockat will be Azir. Okay. So that's also actually targeting their own champion pool because Overpower did, of course, run that himself during the offseason. But again, we see some different bans from what we've been used to in the last few weeks, looking at other regions. Castellan being locked in is a little bit surprising to me because, as we just saw in the last game, it allows now the enemy team to pick two laners who can deal really well with the Castellan. And at the same time, you shouldn't expect the enemy team to take him over Janna. You shouldn't expect to take him over Nar or Lissandra here, or Sivir, which is also open for Rocket in this situation. So giving over Janna for the Castellan first pick, I don't agree from SK Gaming's side. I think they could have saved it for later. Well, we're about to find out how the rest of the cookies crumble. As we've said, that flex pick. But this has been an interesting pick and ban already with Renekton and Azir being taken off by Rockat. Um, it's not something that we traditionally expect. And you were, touching great, on yeah. the, you were touching on the fact that Thresh, Janna, what support champion is in raid to get on play? This is a guy who ran support Galio last year. This is a guy that has played those oddball champions. So I wouldn't be too surprised to see him pulling out something shocking in this particular matchup in the first game of the 2015 season. Normally, the play style for Enraided is very disengaged, focused. He doesn't really like to be the main engage. He used to be a big Leona player if you go a few years back, yeah. but he's basically been sitting on disengaged supports. Again, Morgana's been a big pick for him. Uh, Kale support, remember, he played it a lot. A lot of focus like, always on fairly passive play. Have your AD carry make the plays in the laning phase, and then you just protect him in the late game team fights. Well, we'll see if they can actually make that happen. Again, really, really timed, slow-paced picks and bans. That's in a flame. Not really talking. Listening to Fox, who you can see is sharing his opinion. 10 seconds down, hovering through the picks. Lee Sin, one of the top-tier junglers, locked in. Last couple of seconds before they decide. It was, All right. let's see what they lock in now for SK. Ah, didn't actually go for it. Svensko has been playing quite a lot of Car 6. And meanwhile, Callista being logged in. That probably wasn't uh, how it was supposed to be. We see the coach react instantly, and also SK Gaming pointing out we might have a uh, remake of this. Oh, pick let's face let's here. no hang on, just hang wait on. and see. Let's but not make assumptions. Did not look intended. Let's not make assumptions. I think if a player has made a mistake, I don't know if those are grounds for instant regame. Regardless, kill us to locked in for forgiven. If anybody was going to play a champion that is slightly off the wall, slightly aggressive, that could be one of them. And you know what? SK ran the clock down the whole time. So we'll see how this works out. Yeah, so not knowing what SK actually were going to pick on their side, but Rocket, they're getting so many strong picks here. Lee Sin for Yang, because he's most played champion. We talk about Lee but it is Lee Sin that is his most played champion. And of course, the Jenna. Jenna being <laughs> logged in. I, I take it back. We have heard we will be remaking champion I mean, select. Normally, when you pick a champion I'm in LCS, you don't. Click random and you spam it I'm for a few seconds. I'm disappointed. And you choose a champion. Because he's right. I'm disappointed yes, because he's right. So, yes. And we wanted to see Kalista. Unfortunately, they couldn't lock in the correct champion, so we will run through those as quickly as possible. I want to see a Kalista in the hands of Forgiven as well. Somebody who is very aggressive, 
5.1, he's got extra damage, but let's stop theorizing. Uh, what I do want to touch on is the fact that Nuke Duck, he was hovering the Fizz just before we dropped out. Uh, I normally don't like talking about hovers, but if anybody was going to play an Assassin, it would be Nuke Duck. It's his bread and butter. But he the Bang is open, Ari is open, a bit safer choice than a Fizz if he wants to blind pick his mid laner, because Kastadin, of course, is a flex pick and go both top and mid for SK Gaming, so... I'm not expecting the Fizz. I think LeBong would be a safer choice for him. And also a champion where together with Lee Sin, you have one of the best 2v2 fights in this early to mid game and you can just completely take over the enemy mid lane and the entrance to the jungle at Raptor Camp at their Merc Wolves, of course, with that combination. Well, we'll have to find out. We are hearing that. Picks and bans will occur exactly the same order up until the point that Callista was locked in. So we'll need to see what that changes to. We did see Graves was taken off the table. So Forgiven's not going to be playing his Graves. We did see him playing a fair amount of Ezreal, of Jinx, of all the sort of meta picks last year. But Jinx was the one that he sort of fell back to. He likes his champions that scale yeah. into the late game. Forgiven's never really been a guy in the LCS stage that's pulled out the likes of Vayne, though. So you know, he, he prefers those sort of longer range... Potential spell cast type champion. And again, also the play style from the Copenhagen Wolves was very uh, focused on late game, so yeah. you needed that wave clear to come in. So, a Jinx with a static shift, or most cases for him, a Caitlyn obviously coming in. Strong laning phase, you can bully out the enemy to carry, and you have that wave clear to kind of get to the late game points. You can fast push down towers. Was his go to champion? It has been played more and more because Sivir has come back as a champion where Caitlyn has a very strong laning matchup against her. And we start. He had 5.1. I think we're going to see a little bit more fast push because you can get that early Baron as well if you get the lead and really start taking down these towers. But we'll see if they actually can make that happen. Zed was taken off the table from SK Gaming this time around. So in terms of that split push or fast push or, you know, those kinds of strategies, they are minimized. So we're going to rush through these first few picks and find out exactly which champions SK will be playing. I do apologize about that delay, but we should be into game fairly, fairly shortly. Freddy is going to be locking in that Cassidy, And again, first pick Cassidy. Yeah. EU has always loved Cassidy, as have most of the world, but they haven't seemed to have given him up. The offseason has brought back a flavor of the month. Is that locked in from SK? It is. Right, it's Lucian. going to be a Lucian for Forgiven. And people might wonder what happened to Corky, seeing as he's not being picked at all today. It was open here. Grace been banned away. It would have been a normal choice then for most AD carries around the world, but the change to his W, now it costs 100 mana, actually hit him quite hard in terms of his laning phase because you really have to be careful now with how you use the mana. You can't really poke as much pre-level 6, so you are fairly weak in that situation. And then you need your level 6 point, get your Trinity Force, and you can have your big mid-game power spike before you really become powerful on Corky. And that's one of the reasons the EU AD carries don't really pick him anymore, at least not as high uh, up there as the likes of uh, a Lucian or Sivir, which we have seen, which Rocket can pick. If they go Sivir and LeBlanc here, you have such a crazy pick combo, and you have so much engaged potential as well. Well, we'll see what they decide to lock in. Just very quickly, Lucian was Forgiven's most played champion during the spring split. He played 11 games out of the 28. One five, lost six. So he's going back to his sort of bread and butter most played. We touched on the Jinx. I was thinking that maybe oh, Forgiven would play it. Last, le last second lock in will be the Tristana, the little smug grin from the Summer Split Rookie of the Year. And that's some good late game scaling from Rockets. Yeah, much needed as well. You have Lee Sin, you have LeBlanc here to secure the early to mid game for you. And now you have Tristana going into late game. Also looking at the side of SK Gaming, when there is a Cassidy in this early pick, you know, okay, they are also aiming towards this late game and stuff because you need that Cassidy to scale up. He's not going to be super powerful from the start of the game. To pick in Tristana gives them a lot of late game power from Rocket here. And this basically requires SK Gaming to rethink here. Do we now want to have more mid game coming in to kind of follow up with the Lucian and try and stop Rocket from going to late game with Tristana? Well, let's see what SK decide oh, to lock in. in. They've nice. got some decent engage. They've got power at different stages in the game. And now they've got a very beefy front line with Gnar. And that's most likely a Lulu support. It is going to be a Lulu support. And actually now, looking at this LeBlanc pick, we talked about it before how it was more of a safe option. LeBlanc actually doesn't have a very good matchup into Kassadin. Kassadin does really well. He can easily out farmer. He can even trade with his Q so easily with the LeBlanc. And that again shows Nuke Dog and his confidence saying, you know what, I can take this matchup. I've seen it before. It went in favor of Kassadin. Nope, I don't care. I'm going to take LeBlanc and show everyone how you play this. And we'll see if Nuke Dog can make an impact on those side lanes. If his one on one matchup in mid isn't going to go his way, he's going to have the option to roam and move around the map. 
So SK have rounded out their comp. I feel like they've got a little bit of everything. Engage, disengage, mobility, decent enough scaling. Rockat are running down the clock and deciding how they're going to round their team comp out. Theirs is a little more disjointed. With Lissandra, however, you've still got elements and emphasis of pick as well with both of those AP majors. Yeah, definitely a lot of pick potential for them. And then you have Tristana for late game and every single a carry from your R range if you want to start pushing down these towers with Woolite. But SK Gaming, it's a very skirmish focus comp from them. You don't really have the greatest siege because you only have Lucian to really deal damage onto the towers. Your Castellan obviously won't do a lot. You have a lot of catch potential with a Nar, with a Jarvan, even Castellan coming in. So it's going to be a lot of focus on picks and skirmishes from SK Gaming. Where Rocket, on the other hand, again, you have this super, super strong mid lane synergy or setup with a Lee Sin and a LeBlanc to kind of try and shut down Castellan. That must be the goal. Goal from Rocket in the early game. Pressure on Castellan. Make sure he never gets going and take the game from there. And you have Bullide as your backup going into late game on the Tristana. We'll have to see if the fact that they don't have that traditional front line causes them any troubles. So it is something we like to highlight. If you don't have somebody that can stand up to a Gnar or a Jarvan in this case for those Gnar Cataclysm combos, it could end up being quite scary. So picks and bans have been locked in. Going into this game, it was dead even, 50-50, according to the lolesports.com <laughs> votes. And I don't really know how to call it. I don't really know if 50 -50. either of these teams have got any sort of advantage. It's different play styles. You guys at home vote now that you've seen the team comps. Who do you think is going to come out ahead? Tweet at us at LOL Esports. Use the hashtag SKWIN or use the hashtag ROCWIN to see who banned Varus the most and who will come out victorious in this grudge match. SK went to Worlds after beating Rockout the last time they faced off. Rockout wants revenge and wants to kick off 2015 with a bang. It's SK on the blue side, it's Rockout on the red side. Just looking at the, the start here, I'm a little bit surprised about no flask on Cassidy. It's well, typically what you see for this 1 to 5 or 1 to 6 before you have your ulti. But uh, you see a lot of uh, trading going on between these two mid laners. I want to see how Nuke Dog plays the matchup because last few times we have seen it, it's gone heavily in favor of the Cassidy. So we've got two very interesting lanes to watch between the top lane, Freddy versus Overpower, not only because of Overpower's roll swap, but also to see how well Freddy is playing or how good Freddy is performing in the 2015 season. <laughs> and of course, that bottom lane, let's be frank, we're anticipating Forgiven and Woolite to set their sights in the mid to late game. So let's see how those lanes pan out. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of Lula's support. I feel like she gets out-traded by the likes of a Jenna support with her shield. And you don't really have any sustain. So in terms of like pure damage or sustainability in your lane, you don't really add a lot. It's more like for the team fight itself, for the mid game from Enraided on this Lulu here. Maybe then again, Tristana has received a lot of... Uh, nerves to her early game, so she's kind of lost a bit of her power there. Well, Seems like Rocket wants to have a standard lane and SK Gaming does not. Well, we'll see how the lanes set up. About 20 seconds before those minions are spawning, or monsters are spawning in the jungles. But the one thing to note, I do feel that Krepo will have an opinion to share on this support, Lulu. You know, we were discussing it off-air fairly recently, and it wasn't he very possible. shares the opinion, Deficio, and it's not the best pick at the moment. So, Enrated, we'll see if he can make it work. SK have sent their duo top, and we'll see how quickly Freddy makes it to the bottom lane. So the way it can work as a uh, 2v1 pick, as a lane swap pick, is Lulu has the ability to really fast push down waves, get to the tower, get a lot of damage on the tower as well. So we might see Forgiven and Enrated try and just fast push the top lane here, get an early tower, then swap back down to this bottom lane with a gold advantage while Freddy on now. One of the better 1v2 top laners because he can farm from range, he's fairly safe, even has the early level 2 from doing a jungle camp. Meaning, if you can defend that tower, you take the top tower and then you swap back and you actually one out on the lane swap. Well, a lot of emphasis is going to be on that first tower. And we'll see if SK can make that play happen. It looks like Enrated is already backing off. We'll see how quickly he can get to either right. help out or cancel it. Doesn't look to be the fastest of pushes here for given no, Looking to last hit, so maybe not the strategy at the moment. No, you. they're going to play it very uh, standard here. You get level 2 on your support, you recall and you walk down to the bottom lane and you assist your top laner if he needs your help to farm. But for now, and ready running towards the mid lane. He has picked up a few wards and you don't really need the wards on the bottom side. So I actually quite like if he goes in and places a 
pink ward around this mid lane here to try and set up a potential gank for Svenska. Well, advantage to Freddy. He already did that jungle camp to get the early level two. He's been in lane, soaking up some XP and trying to farm with that boomerang as best as he can. Overpass only just made it to the top lane. Yeah, but because in the top lane, SK Gaming was so late, so they did manage to get a freeze because they actually had to choose which lane to go to. I think they spotted Rocket moving to the bottom lane and then decided to go top. So no freeze. And seeing as Enraider decided to recall early on, they haven't denied anything from Overpower. The entire wave coming into him, he can just pick up all the farm now. Very safe, so not the best lane swap early. And I guess we can go back to the first thing I said. SK trying now to fast push instead, and Enraider not going down to the bottom lane. So finally getting around to the mind tactic. games. Took a little longer than maybe they could have done if they had committed to that strategy earlier. Regardless, we did see Nuketuck taking a lot of damage in the mid lane. He's been pushed back by Fox, he's burned through his potions, and he's 12 CS down already. Changes to Cassidy a while ago have improved his laning phase, and Nuketuck's again in a little bit of a difficult situation. It's just such a strong pick against the bomb because you cannot poke through his shield, you don't have enough mana to do it, and at the same time, you could, which means you can just never stop Ooh. farming. But overpower and Yankos. Around this mid lane here, Svenskan staying around as well. Well, let's see the pot. Fox gets caught up. Svenskan comes in with a good knocker. Fox still in trouble. Yankos is trying to get first oh, blood. Will it secure? Oh. No! Fox survives with the potion. Now Svenskan's in trouble. Rocket continuing to set sides. Yankos, can he do it? Decides against it. Two near first bloods for Yankos, but nobody goes down. No, but the early pressure on the Kassadin pick, as we talked about, could be one of the reasons for the blind pick. You have to chain onto Kassadin here, pre-level 6, try and lock him down. Yankos and Opa could then join in, but a nice counter gank from Svenskern saves everyone. And Opa just going back to this top. So, Opa does use that teleport. Got himself some biscuits and will be defending against Forgiven and Enrated. Okay, so yeah. SK Gaming decides to fast push the lane. Don't want to try and deny anything. This is what we talked about in the very, very start. You can do with Lulu in a lane swap. That's why they keep pushing it down. Don't care about over picking up farms. They just want the tower and then swap back down to this bottom lane. And that's also why Freddy's playing so aggressive, trying to push Rocket away from their tower here, making sure it stays alive. We'll see if they can make that strategy work. I do want to once again comment on the fact that Nuketuck picked LeBlanc into Cassidy. That was a first pick Cassidy here Good for true. Fox. For SK Gaming's new mid laner, that's not something that you would say very often when Jezus was playing on the squad. He was seldom the sort of carry mid laner, often more utility based. And only really Ari being a sort of carry based champion. But we'll see how they handle themselves with this new player. SK Gaming still continuing to hold small advantage. They've sort of Dictated the tempo. They've got some good damage onto Rocket's top Once tower. Once again, and around the mid lane. Yankos, again, repeated ganks for Nuketuck. Not something we saw all too often last year. Overpower again. He's moving himself down to this mid lane. They really want to try punish Fox. They know he's got no flash available. Overpower is basically just waiting for the minions to hit his tower up on the top side. That's why he keeps trying to go for this gank. But now he's going to lose out on so many CS. He should have just stuck to the top side. Realize that your early gank on the mid lane didn't pay off adapt to it and at least pick up as much farm as you can only on, on, uh, on your Lissandra. Yeah, definitely not the case. Not working out for them for the time being. Rockat showing where they want their investments to lie. None of them are paying dividends or returning a profit. So Fox continues to hold a CS advantage against Nuketuck in the mid lane. This Cassidy starting off decently well and without that crystalline floss that we were anticipating. Yeah, didn't even have to use all these potions actually before the gank happened early on here. And Raider once again, he goes back. Buys a few wards, place them around the mid lane to make sure they can see everything that's happening. And if Rocket wants again, want to try and gank this middle lane, and then he can just go back up to the top lane where Forgiven is already building off the wave for him to join in on. Well, Vanda has continued to try poke Freddy out. Every time we catch a glimpse of this lane, Vanda is just way in front of the minion line, doing the best he can to deny Freddy. But level six has been gained, so. Now will be available for transformation. He's only a few CS behind that of Overpal. Overpal getting close to getting his glacial tomb available. He's still a few minions away. And Wulad actually decided now to skill up his E on Tristan. He didn't before because you don't want to skill it if you're sitting in a lane swap and you want to try and freeze the wave. Because you obviously don't want the explosion on all these minions here. But he got it now after they realized how SK Gaming was playing the lane swap to actually start pushing it down. Probably get some damage on this tower once they've come back to base because you cannot risk staying in base once Forgiven kills that tower and he recalls, oh sorry, you kind of risk staying in lane. Once Forgiven kills the tower, goes back, gets an item, and if you're sitting on Dorn's Blade when he returns to lane, you're just going to be forced out of it. So, Wulad has to go back now, smart choice, pick up a few items, 
then return to lane because he knows Forgiven is on his way. Well, let's see how Will I plays the lane matchup now that his opponent will be potentially coming down. They got that zeal, got that pickaxe. We see that Fox has got himself Catalyst, the protector. Nuke Duck, double Dorans. So, gonna invest. Little investment's gonna be a little longer till he gets his item spikes. And again, a difference in jungle items between Svenskar and Yankos. Yeah, but uh, Wool Light here, steal his uh, first item together with the pickaxe. Back when Static Shift was the normal second item on Tristana, and I was back, it's been like a day or two ago, but <laughs> you would go for the Abyss Blade to get the extra gold income, and then you would get like a pickaxe or BF Sword, and you would kind of try and farm as fast as possible towards the two items. Right? He's gonna do the same here. He just doesn't get the extra gold, but he actually gets more combat stats from his seal. It's a lot more gold efficient in the stats it provides you, so it will make him slightly stronger than having the average blade. And obviously, he's now looking towards Phantom Dancer and Infinity Edge, we would expect from his first two items, and you just want to get to them as fast as possible. Not really team fight before you have them. Well, we'll see how much that zeal is going to help, considering he's going to be up against a BF sword, a pickaxe, Not a whole lot. and a long sword from Forgiven. Will I's getting some decent damage onto the tower. Ops to trade some damage on Freddy instead, but here comes Forgiven. He's moving to the bottom lane, and we'll see what support he can get. All Freddy needs to do is just buy time, make sure the tower stays alive, and you run out on the lane swap. That's a mistake. That was a mistake here. Yank is getting the blue buff. I think he's red buff. Took it in the very end. Not exactly what Nuke Dog needed in this mid lane. Definitely not, All right. considering the pressure that he had. So tower is up. Freddy has done his job. The strategy that SK employed a few minutes ago has worked out. And now with the numbers advantage, he may be making a move. Vanda, that's a great Howling Gale. Doesn't get knocked up, but he slows. Everybody dives. First blood secured by Sven Skeren. Just way out of place and all too easy for SK. Yeah, nice nugget, but not really paying attention to how many players SK has on this bottom side. They knew Forgiven and Enraider would show up, and Freddy was still sitting there. So just sloppy play by Vanda, walking in, dying. Dragon for SK Gaming, top tower for SK Gaming as well. This is looking very, very good for them. Yeah, very, very big misplay there from Rocket. So we'll have to see if they can recover. There are 1,300 gold down. Lanes have gone in favor of SK. SK initiated the lane swap. They got the first tower. They saved their bottom tower. It's all been about SK. Nuke Duck, the only reason I think it's fair to say that he's even this close to CS is because there's been two roams and ganks from his teammates to help counterbalance the, the damage and the pressure that Fox was applying. Yeah. But he is keeping himself relevant. He's got that chalice, not really damage stats, but allows him to spam and farm and try to stay in lane even longer. Look at Yankos here, going towards the top lane. A massive wave has been built up, and they want to try and force Freddy away before he can get any of the farm. Luckily for him, he plays the ward, smart play, knowing there's a chance of the enemy jungle being here, trying to do... Actually, just kill or dive me before I can pick up any CS. Well, Freddy continues to do well in this top lane matchup. You see, once again, SK setting their sights on the bottom half of the map. They're looking for Woolite. Woolite does have that flash. He does have the heal. Forgiven's got in. Woolite oh, jumps in. He flashes out. He gets taken out. Here comes Overpower. What can he do? There's so many members of SK. The Claw of Doom takes him way out of dodge. And SK Gaming secure a single kill and all of the pressure on the turret. Just smart plays all around. Great shot calling from SK Gaming. Freddy goes to the top lane and says, okay, there's a high chance Yankos is here. I'm going to place a ward, avoid dying. Okay, enemy jungle is top lane. Svenskan instantly just walks to the bottom side. Kassadin follows. You dive Rocket's bottom lane, kill them, get a big lead for SK Gaming. I mean, this is just great shot calling and knowing exactly what Rocket is doing on the map and how to counter it. We'll have to see if they can keep it up. Every single time Rocket have made a move, SK have been able to counter and to accelerate their lead. It's now 2,000 gold. Fox goes back to the mid lane, and he's even going to be farming up this massive wave as well. And that is an important thing about this roster change from SK, because they didn't actually lose anything in terms of shot calling or like the knowledge about the game, because they kept all the important members, Freddy and Raiden, who are doing pick and ban phase, who are doing a lot of the calls in the game. They kept both of those members here and just build around that instead of replacing some of them and saying, you know, we want maybe a more flashy support instead of in Raided. Kept him, relying on him, and it's been paying off. Well, thus far, at least 12 minutes into the game, SK have come out swinging. They've definitely stamped some control. Forgiven has already got a 20 CS advantage over Woolite. going to lose his tower in a moment, but he's got that BF sword, got those Berserker's Greaves. A lot of combat stats, and Woolite got that Avarice Blade, so it looks like okay. he's still going for the Shiv, not the Phantom Dancer. So he will like to go we Shiv. Expecting. Just a little bit weird he didn't go for Avarice Blade on the first back, just for the extra gold. Uh, obviously, Zeal again is a better item, but still. 
Static Shift will give him some decent wave clear, and Rocket will be needing it this game. Because he's going to have to sit back and just try and power farm on the tower and avoid SK Gaming taking down as many towers as they can while they're going to be stronger. Because Lucian is going to hit a massive power spike once his Infinity Edge is completed and will at won't be able to duel him. Well, start of the game, we showed you the lolesports.com vote. 50-50 Twitter is still completely undecided. Based off picks and bans, just marginally in favor of SK. But I think seeing how how controlled really this early game has been, there's going to be a few more believers. Hex Drinker picked up for Freddy's not. Still that catalyst in Fox's back pocket. I think he should be getting close to that Rod of Ages, if not immediately. And of course, Noob Tuck going to be getting towards that Athens on Holy Grail. One thing to highlight is just how good Freddy is on split push champions. This time round though, it does look like he's caught out. Overpower's been stunned. Now Freddy's gonna do a double stun. He locks up Overpower on Yankos. He crunches over the wall. Manages to throw the boulder at Yankos. Yankos looking. Nice the kick flash. Kicks him to safety. Freddy doing work. Here is a spring split. Spence Karen comes back in. There's the claw of doom. Spence Karen goes down in the background, but Freddy gets himself two for one. And SK with a good play in the top lane. Such a nice play, just knowing exactly how much damage he can take, buying time for Svenskan, who was running from his own blue buff up there to help him. Two kills again, Rocket did try to catch out Freddy. Didn't work. Yeah, you can't catch Freddy. Just really, really good plays, manages to yeah, not We learned only... that doing worlds. Yeah, not exactly. Really Freddy or ban him. No, you, you can't. And, and again, I keep talking about his Nidalee play, mostly because of just how dominant his presence was on the map. When he was playing Nidalee in the summer split, uh, everybody had to pay attention. Everybody had to figure out how, how to deal with it. And right now, SK, they group up and they've got pressure on the mid outer turret. It's a great play here. Looking at the members from Rocket, LeBlanc can really wave clear when you're standing at her tower because she has to jump into your face. And Woolad is going to be the main wave clear together with Overpower. They were gone from the mid lane, so a quick little rotation from SK to get some damage on this tower here. Dragon spawning in 50 seconds. Go back now, buy some wards. If you are close to a finishing a core item, do it now. Come back, set up your ward control, and be ready to fight. Second time round, Nuketuck manages to secure his blue buff. No accidental kill secures there by Yankos. The CS advantage continues to grow for Forgiven. He's got nearly 30 CS in the lead. Warlight has got that static shiv completed, and a little bit of trading back and forth between Fox and Nuketuck with Nuketuck's Athenes. He's got a tad more ability to trade and put damage down, but we're not expecting kill pressure really unless someone gets outplayed severely. No, but a bit of the same here for SK Gaming in terms of wave clear. They have to rely on forgiving being in this mid lane. So Rocket decided to try and do the same, push it down, but realized there were too many people around. And instead, focus on this dragon. Teleport is ready for both of the top laners. Mega now was just popped over by Freddy. There's something I do want to highlight. We were discussing the support Lulu and how impactful it's going to be in the mid-game. You can see there's Ionian Boots of Lucidity picked up for Enrated. No mana regen, no anything else. He wants the CDR, wants the movement speed. Overpal looking to chase Freddy, knowing Mega Nar is not available. He's got the support of Yankos this time round, and there's no flash. Freddy unable to stun anybody. Easily get picked off. And that may be the cost of a dragon. SK get number two. No one from Rocket around to steal. Actually a good play by Freddy at the end of the day. Well, it's just Rocket saying we can't really fight for the Dragon anyway. We just want our Tristana to sit and farm, get to the late game. We want obviously New Dog to try and catch up a little bit. He's done a very good job getting back in this lane on the bank, so now he can start set it, setting up some plays. But this is Rocket saying let's take a kill in the top lane because we won't be able to contest the Dragon anyway. Well, we'll see how they make it work. A lot of members of SK hanging around, waiting in the wings. We'll see if they can take flight. That was a little uninspiring. Fox forced a flash. After moving himself in, and surely I think that was a bit opportunistic. That was a flash distortion LeBlanc that could have got away. Regardless, Fox, no summoner spell for the next engage. And Rocket now going to put some auto attacks down on this middle lane. You do see Svenskeren helping to wave clear thanks to that smite. But a good amount of damage by Rocket to reply. You can always get a few hits on the tower. There's no instant wave clear from SK Gaming. And as you just mentioned, Javan can provide quite some. Has his sword and obviously the smite. Airy damage from his uh, Trail Blazer, which actually has been the go-to item for Javans today. No chilling smite any longer, but it's also because SK Gaming will go for the lane swap. So Svenska knew he wasn't going to be too active in terms of ganking early on. So he goes for the farm heavy item and just sets up power farms in the jungle. Only goes to counter gank if needed and let the rest of his team 
do all the work in the lane swap. And of course, changes to that chilling smite. Movement steel instead of the very, very powerful slow. You do have to say that Sven Skeren's jungle decisions and counter ganking have been significantly better than Yankos this game, despite the fact that we were very heavily praising Yankos coming in, at least from an LCS perspective. But truthfully, Sven Skeren deserves similar levels of praise because he was just as Ooh. good at many wow. times last year. But look at Wallai, forced away from the Infinity Edge damage that Forgiven is putting down. And I quite like that Forgiven is actually getting lifesteal as his second item here. He probably won't complete it before. Oh, let's see, Freddy. Oh, <laughs> Freddy gets caught up, but he gets uh, held in place. Nars, overpower against the wall. Overpower doesn't manage to get the Claw of Doom out, but a crunch from Freddy gets him to put some space. And that's again 2v1 that Freddy manages to come out ahead. Oh, it's not over yet. Nukta trying to get some damage down, forced to back away. So again, what Forgiven is doing here by getting a lifesteal item after the Infinity Edge is because he's going to be sitting in the mid lane, pushing it in and trying to poke down his tower. So you want to have some lifesteal because you will take a few hits back in your face when you're trying to do some damage. You will constantly wave it. Lifesteal it back, stay in the mid lane, keep the pressure up. So I actually quite like it. Should be going into an attack speed item though before he completes a BT. Well, we'll see if he decides to stick with that plan. Fox was pushing down the bottom tower, the rest of SK. Pushing up the middle tower. Freddy's return top. That's a lot of damage from Nuketuck onto Forgiven. It should be enough to defend the tower. But Rockat really just playing with scraps at the moment. They're 2,000 gold down. Woolite still only sitting on two parts of the Infinity Edge and no BF sword. It's going to be a while before he has that sort of similar level of uh, gold. And there's the hint towards an attack speed item it's an avarice blade first for forgiven so again pretty big hit. not seeing the uh phantom dancer yet oh we'll be starting shift again a lot of these ad carries they want to go for this a little bit cheaper attack speed item give you a bit more power in the mid game through like the upfront burst you get from a static shift compared to phantom dancer which give you more overall single target damage but they're all building for this mid game instead that's why the teams are being so aggressive as well and making or trying to make some plays. Rocket with a very nice push on the mid lane just before, though. And now SK's back, doing exactly the same again. Well, let's see if SK can secure this tower. They've got the numbers advantage as Rocket are still a little split up in the jungle. Tower's got the shield there from Janna. We can see Overpal waiting in the wings. He wants to come in. Not enough Not gonna be to able to. And Rocket loses the tower. And again, you can't. When there are five members standing here, Lissandra, a bit like Rebong, has fairly short range on her wave place, so you have to play very safe. Blue Light as well, staying back, he's down to 50% HP, meeting a tower for SK Gaming, and they've been working on it for like two or three minutes by constantly moving and get a few hits back away, and now the Sodia opening, picked up the tower, all auto turrets are gone now from Rocket. Luckily for Rocket, they did get a lot of damage onto SK's mid outer turret, so just a gentle breath of air should knock that one over. The minute and a half before the next dragon. Rockat need to get themselves either some vision or, as you know, we heard uh, Unlimited saying, because it doesn't give gold, you don't need to contest the dragons as long as you don't give up five. That's the trick. But if you can take towers, if you can keep relevant in gold, that's really what matters. Rockat, they're, they're dancing a very, very fine line with that theory. Yeah, and seeing as SK can just keep Freddy one on one in overpower, and they can even have the castle against the LeBlanc as well. They don't really have to give up a tower for a dragon because they should be able to control the side lanes at the same time with teleport. Noob Duck <laughs> jumping in, picking off the tower himself. Style points, style points. Manages to get that auto Still attack. though, dragon 55 seconds here. Yes, you can give up a few dragons early on because they don't give that gold, but it's a ticking time bomb. Once you get towards like the fourth dragon, the fifth dragon, of course, is the deciding one. You At some point, you have to just go for a fight, and if you're too far behind, and the enemy team has all these buffs from the dragons you will end up losing it anyway. Well, we'll see what Rocket decide to do. 30 seconds before the next one spawns. Overpower's got himself a Morella Nomicon. He's got that uh, arm guard. And we see Nuke Duck working his way to a similar sort of position. Actually grabbed himself a Soul Stealer. He needs the power. Maybe that's a signal they want to fight at this next buff. That is a risky buy for Nuke Duck. He wants it to pay off. He wants the power now. Yeah, it is still gold efficient when you buy it after the changes because you start on five stacks. But once you die, you lose half of them. So it's a bit of a risky buy, but it really shows how Rocket know at the moment. They're going to have to try and take some fights. Infinity is complete on Woolite, so they're going to be fairly strong for this dragon here. No hourglass, though, from Overpower. Well, Infinity Edge plus Shiv for Woolite, as you highlighted. Forgiven. I mean, if they win this fight, they're back in the game. They might even be in the lead just because Nuketrog has that Soul Stealer. But if they lose it, 
He's looking very bad. That's a very, very big if. Nukta gets some good damage onto Fox, puts him in place. But you see Yankos going to the aid of Nukta's LeBlanc. Overpower and Freddy doing a dance in the middle lane. Four members of SK. They're gonna start off the Dragon. Fox is alone in the pit before the rest of the team decides to move in there. Let's see how this plays out. Rockat trying to set in. Nuketak is going to try to dissuade in Razor, but they're too late. They're too slow. Dragon number three secured by SK, and truthfully, that was all just awkward. Rockat flirted with going in, but decided against it. Yeah, couldn't really find an opening. There was a lot of wards around spotting them as well, so SK could see overpower if he wanted to try and flank around. Same for Nuketak to jump in, so didn't really find an opening. SK just actually grouped up in the dragon beat said, okay, come at us, we're gonna take the fight if you want to. And very important also, Svenskern going towards the locket here against a double AP, even static shift from Tristana and some of the magic damage she does deal, really means the locket is gonna be so powerful. And truthfully, if you're sitting on the side of Rocket, you don't wanna be picking a fight in a narrow river corridor against a cataclysm, a wild growth and a gnar, mega gnar, gnar. Uh, the, the amount of chain CC and, and hard stuns and, and lockups that can come down is just very, very high. So Rocket, they're close enough for gold. They're keeping this sort of 2,000 to 3,000 gold difference. Really as close as you can get. Freddy continues to defend his top lane tower. Escape got three. Let's see if Overpower can... <laughs> this is the ice shot. <laughs> so pretend we didn't see that one. But of course, uh, Rocket really just... They're being bullied around the map, and we haven't seen them make a play. They've tried to gank Freddy, but it's not been the most successful or uh, the best decisions, really. Oh, well, Freddy, he's trying to bait it out, so he's going very aggressive, trying to force Yankos actually to go on to him. Well, Rest of SK are here. Let's see what happens. Overpower's in trouble. He's going to uh, go down that glacier to him. Yankos kicks Svenskeren back, but it's too little. It's too late. Rocket, they want the fight. Now Woolite's in trouble. He gets Cataclysm down. Monsoon is going to heal him just a brief moment. Yankos is low in the background, but we see Freddy is in trouble. The next victim will be Woolite. While are Rocket fighting? Vanda flashes. Get cold is sitting in the by lane. Forgiven, Four and people. that's the first triple kill for Forgiven in the 2015 season. That's going to be a Baron as well. Such a nice setup. Again, Freddy staying, playing way too aggressive in the lane because he wanted Overpower and Yangos to jump him. As soon as it happened, well, the rest of SK joins in. Clean up the fight completely. Wulai is not strong enough to be caught. Weird position as well. He's standing in the front as the Tristana here and Forgiven on this Lucian really using his mid-game power so well. Somebody needs to ask Rockat why they engaged a completely grouped SK after losing overpower, simply not in the right place. Here's the fight again. The Fisio try make it make sense. Well, again, so Freddy's been baiting it. Overpower's been caught out of position. Now he's obviously just dead, trying to get away in the very end. Won't happen. As soon as he dies, rest of Rocket just needs to disengage. But because to see the Cassadin on the bottom side of the map, they actually think they can take the fight. They're just still so much weaker. I mean, look at Forgiven in this fight here. Jumping in and out, killing everyone. Nobody can take down Freddy or Svensson. Blue team triple kill. Absolute destruction. 25 minute Baron for SK Gaming. This looks to be another very one-sided matchup where the team in the lead is just going to steamroll down their opponents. The Baron buff and a sizable gold lead now. Let's see where SK set their sights. Inner turrets are available in all three lanes. Let's do a 1-3-1 one, one here for SK now. Put Cassidy in the bottom lane, Narn the top lane with his uh, teleport. Forgive and stay with Enraider in this mid lane and just push it up. This Lulu pick, we were just talking about, yeah, laning phase, Lulu's not very strong. She gets outlaned by most of the other supports. But because Enraider has been playing, or SK Gaming has been playing like the fast pushing game, first the top tower in the lane swap, then the bottom tower and now the mid lane, He's just been paying off because he sits there, disengages, pushes in the wave every time he has the chance, and it opens up everything for SK. And of course, knowing that Lulu's not great in the laning phase, SK just lane swapped. They played that tower game relatively slowly. It felt like uh, it took a few minutes for them to decide to commit to it. But SK gets They were also free to do whatever they want to because Yankos and Opa kept walking mid lane, Ooh. trying to get a gank, and it just didn't work for them, so there's no pressure on the side lanes early on, and SK Gaming fully controlled the lane. Oh, the, look at the, the damage. Forgiven is really just putting a beating down onto Rocket. SK grabbed the inner turret uncontested. The inhibitor and the inhibitor turret just uncontested after a little bit of poke. And SK definitely making use of that Baron effect. Yeah, just getting Baron buff so early. Again, the enemy team, they're not strong enough to deal with these powered up minions and the champions coming in with them. So Rocket just had to go up the tower. 
not enough instant wave play for them to fall this far behind and still try and come back. They need SK Gaming to, to just overdive them, pick up a few kills on Nuke Dog with the Soul Steel, otherwise the game is over. Yeah, the threat of the giant Gnar in the background, keeping Rockout at bay. Gonna wait for that to try timeout. SK Gaming secure another turret with a buff. They've got a minion wave to work with. We'll have to see how and when they decide to push out that bottom lane. But for the time being, a minute before the next dragon, that'll be number four if you're keeping score for SK Gaming. And it looks like that's where they potentially want to set their sights. Yeah, once they get the dragon here, six minutes before the next one, the crucial one for your fifth one. Should actually be timed pretty well with Baron respawning. Take the Baron, you go down, take the dragon, you get both the buffs, and then you should be able to push for the finish here because Rocket won't be able to fight for this dragon either. <laughs> Happens to everybody. Yeah. Happens to everybody, even the best of us. But you know, I want to quote what Enrated was saying in the uh, pre-game video, how Fox you know, came up from SK Prime. He was the mid laner that sort of completed the team that just fit in with everybody. He's 1-0-1 in on this castle. It was a first pick. While it's not been the deciding factor in the matchup, he's been in the right place at the right time. The team decision, the teamwork, and the coordination across the map has been on point. And SK have roamed, they have rotated. The shot calling has just been so much better. Exactly. Very, very game. good call. It's not about individual players here, it's just shot calling, the team game, knowing your comp and how you want to play it from the lane swap, from the items to buy level one, being in the trail place for Sven to to get a bit more farm, or being in the Lulu pick to fast push down. It's just been such a well played game by SK, and they'll leave nothing. Rocket to do. Yeah, very, very strategically thought out game. SK are inches away from their first victory in the spring split. And so far, the grudge matches have gone the way that they did last year as well. You know, Copenhagen Wolves beat H2K, albeit dramatically. SK Gaming are yet again ahead of Rocket. This time, convincingly, truthfully, as it was in the Gamescom playoffs as well. Can't deny that. But if you look at the minimap, SK, don't have the deepest division. They don't need it when they got a 9k gold lead. Just get, <laughs> just get the last out of turret here. And then you can either play it safe and wait for an next dragon to spawn, or you can just keep pushing your advantage because you're so far ahead. I mean, look at Forgiven on this Lucian as well. 302, 340 CS next to the 270. Culling used to once again put some damage down onto the Rock Cat members. Baron has since worn off. Look at the burst, 50% of Woolite blown up before he can even get in range. And again, also good item choices by SK, getting early kills on Enraiter against Alessandra here to cleanse ulti if she ever wants to try to get... There it is! Oh, Enraiter's the one that's been caught out. This is a desperation fight for Rocket. Overpart throws down the hourglass. He'll be the first victim despite engaging the fight. And Freddy is continuing to buy time. The super minions on the Nexus turrets for Rocket to deal with. And SK Gaming... Seems to be in complete control. They did trade one for one. Let's see how much work Wallite can do. The Super Minions continue to pressure. Look at the minimap. The turrets have dealt with him thus far, but SK, they look to be re-engaging on this inner turret. He's staying around here. Forgiven is still very healthy, and it's all about Wallite trying to wave clear. Not enough minutes here. SK can just back off here, wait for this dragon or the Barons to spawn, get an objective, and then go for another push. Well, decent enough engage from Rock out. One for one. Luckily, Woolite, having that very long range of Tristana, continues to defend the tower, but unfortunately, SK unable to dominate even further in that bottom lane. Not too much damage in the turret either. Yeah, but the mid-game uh, items again also for SK, we've talked about it a few times already. It's paying off for them because they keep playing so aggressive, they keep forcing the pushes or the fights. They have the Static Shift instead of Phantom Dancer for Forgiven on Lucian. Sunfire Cape instead of Randuin's Omen from Freddy here, it's cheaper items, not as strong, but you get them before earlier, you can get a third or fourth item completed way before Rock can follow and thereby get the lead. No, we definitely got that being the case. Morelli Nomicon and Hourglass for Overpal. We have that locket sitting on the side of Yankos. The Soul Stealer, down and half stacks as far as Nukesak is concerned, finally got himself that need to see large drive, but truthfully, he's nowhere near the damage that he needs or wants. It does look like they've caught Vanda. Vanda's gonna be the first victim, just way out of place, way out of dodge. He's losing that member. Rocket now most likely gonna be unable to defend a potential Baron. What will Should SK inhibitor do? First. Are they focusing Inhibitor? That seems to be the case. Straightforward, take Inhibitor, go back to Baron, pick it up, go down, take your Dragon, <laughs> and go for the finish. Sounds like a nursery rhyme. Is, that, is it that simple? Well, not really. It's taken half an hour of setup. 
Look at the burst. And he's here, but it's secured. Back away for Baron. I want to see Oobar just go for home guards here and just try some crazy flank around engage whenever SK actually pushes up to the base. Trying like instant kill forgiven or instant kill maybe, I don't know, the Kassadin, the Lulu, whatever. Just try and get an early kill from the flank around because you have to try and do something. You can't just sit back. SK will just destroy your base. Well, Rockets engaged previously in the bottom lane. Did seem to work out. It was one for one. He did manage to defend the turret. SK is shredding through this Baron. It's down below half health, denying the vision. Keep in mind, everybody for Rocket is alive. Let's see how this plays out. Mega Nar, crunch comes down. Freddy is knocked away. This is the Dragon's Rage kick, but Rocket are in full retreat. SK have set their sights on a fight. And we'll see if Rocket can get away. All right, it does seem to be the case. SK continue to be grouped up. A minute 40 for Dragon. Baron is live. SK have the pick and choose of what they want. If they go back to the Baron here, there's a massive wave on the bottom side, which has to be dealt with by Rocket. And for now, SK Gaming is realizing it, going straight back here, playing out a few more walls, quite a few in the Baron pit itself. But they're just waiting it out as well, because they know they can keep starting Baron over and over and force Rocket to come and fight them. Well, we'll see, they're doing it again. Rocket, again, a little bit splits up. Warlight to the front line, tanking up some damage. Baron has been stopped. SK once again peeled away. Warlight this time round is very, very low on HP. It looked like Freddy had kept the Baron reset, but it has now gone back to near full HP. The Baron dance continues, 34 minutes into this game. Rocket trying to find a way in. For now though, because the bottom lane have been pushed back, we actually see SK go back to base. Go back to full HP by a few more wards. We have three sweepers and two warding totems from them. So far, not upgraded actually, so uh, don't have the pink ward from them just yet. And they're all full items, so not a lot of wards being bought here by SK Gaming. Funny enough, a thing they didn't do last year either. Who needs wards when you can just <laughs> out-rotate the enemy team anyway? <laughs> yeah, I remember talking about the, the vision game from SK at Gamescom last year. And Enrated pulled me aside and tried to defend his position, but truthfully, they don't ward enough. As a team, SK tend to have very good decisions. They tend to understand what's happening, but they seldom have the greatest vision control. Let's see, Nuketuck manages to get the Ethereal Chain locked down onto Fox, which allows him to escape, but a little bit more passive, a little bit more tentative play from SK. Well, this is what we talked about, how you can play it a bit safe once you sit on four dragons, knowing you can just wait for the last one to spawn, pick it up, and force the enemy team to take the fight. Rocket is moving down. It could go horribly wrong for them. We are about to find They're out how in. this goes. They've gone into Enrated. That's the Glacial Tomb on the support, that but Overpals, the first victim of the fight. We see Bandit going down next. Yankos, Warlight, Nuketuck doing the best they can to run away. Forgiven flashes over the wall. The building doesn't connect, but it's not needed because Fox cleans up house. Nuketuck's gonna be the next one. We'll see if he gets nuked down. He does get slowed. Fox has been scared uh, of the sides. That's the clone, right the flag, one. the drag. That's four for zero. That's game. Everything thrown at and rated and he gets away. SK Gaming onto the Nexus turret. They'll be looking to close out the game in style. Such a strong performance. I mean, from level one, they knew exactly what was gonna happen. There was no answer from Rocket. Yangos might even end up dying here. Nope, stays alive. Saves a few fantasy points. Saves a few fantasy points, indeed. SK Gaming onto the second to last turret. Second to last objective of the game. Freddy goes for Yankos. will give up those fantasy points eventually. His Mega Nar transformation oh, happens. And SK actually back away just a little bit, playing this one a tad safer. Warlight was back up and didn't want to get those resets from Tristana. So SK. Going to be happy with the push thus far, but it is their game to lose. They're in absolute oh, control. Yeah. They're just going to go back now and do the exact same shop. Actually, Rocket has an opening now where they can try and rush this dragon and avoid SK getting it. They just have to try and go for it. And we'll see if they do. Banda's in they place do. at the they moment. Do. There was some vision, overpower, and Woolight is there. They should just start it. All right, they got it. Let's be, let's be frank. It's, yes. it's very little. It's very late. It is. It just means SK won't pick it up, and instead, the instant just go for this Baron. Forgiven actually stayed around to the red buff. Life still back up to full HP, and Baron instead picked up by SK. So Rocket avoided them getting the fifth dragon. <laughs> Couldn't really avoid them getting the dragon. Yeah, and they Baron. lose the Nexus turret as well. Super minions doing work in the base. Rocket are so far behind. Going to be evaluating the decisions. Going to be evaluating all of the calls this game. They have to look at the pick and ban phase. SK just run them in circles. It was very clear they had a, a plan with the LeBlanc pick where they were going to camp the mid lane early, try and get Nuke Dog ahead. But it simply meant that Overpower, instead of him just staying top lane, 
and pick up all that farm that was being pushed into his tower. He actually, well, he was slightly ahead of Freddy, but he could have been very far ahead before all that farm he could have gotten. He went mid lane a few times, didn't pay off. Yankos went mid lane, didn't pay off. So the whole tactic of camping the castle in just failed from the start, and then SK Gaming got a massive lead already 20 minutes into the game. Yeah, that's definitely true. And Nuke Dark, unfortunately, not able to carry his team. Defensive strong play by Fox. And I think you have to go back to that first sort of counter gank by Spence Garrett. That really, really could have tilted the game in one direction or another. And it ended up being in favor of SK. So props to Sven. Inhibitor gets dropped in the middle lane. SK Gaming moving up to the top lane to set the sights of the next objective. Remember, there are no Nexus turrets. Baron buff is up. Spence Garrett. That Cataclysm is available. Decides against it. There goes the Gnar backwards. Cataclysm goes down in the middle of the team fight. Forgiven melt. Vanda. Inhibitor goes down. Rocket are in retreat. That's a good slow from Fox. It's not going to matter. SK Gaming pick up the first win of 2015 by defeating Rocket convincingly in a well-controlled, well-coordinated match. Yeah, never really any uh, question here of who was in the lead in this game from the get-go. SK Gaming looking so strong. And a very good start for their new players as well. And kind of looking at your roster and saying, we know we have some good players. We know we can become a top team. Getting such a good start against Rocket, where a lot of people expect to be up there as well. Perfect. Stern looks from Warlight. Definitely not a happy camper. We were expecting more from Rocket, to be fair. We were anticipating a higher level, but SK had a game plan. They executed it. The lane swap went well. First pick, Cassadin ended up paying off for SK, even though was we have seen it before. I mean, look, it wasn't, the bit. it wasn't the deciding factor. No, of course not. And I think in this setup, in this game, despite the fact that you could be critical of that support, Lulu, it worked. Yeah, I mean, the way they played it was perfect. Yep. I was talking about him in the pure laning phase against the Janna. You don't really have much to do, and that's, again, why they go for this fast push instead. All in all, SK Gaming from item builds to lane swap. It was perfect. It was pre-planned. It worked out for them. Rocket took, took a bit of a chance in their pick and ban phase. Couldn't get the kills early on for Nuke Dog. Even had to buy a Soul Steel to try and get back in the game, which I don't even think he got a single stack on. No. One assist.